a Catholic priest, a Jesuit, Father Rupnik, age 68. He's a close friend of Pope Francis. Pope Francis has commissioned him to do all kinds of art. You probably remember this logo from the Year of Mercy for Pope Francis. We're going to talk about the creepy, weird symbolism here. This is the priest, the creepy artist who made this, who allegedly has had relations with nine nuns, brides of Christ, including inviting two of them into a Holy Trinity threesome. How wicked. And here's the zinger, y'all. Here's the big zinger. He's still a priest in good standing right now. Here he is with, whoops, here he is with Pope Francis. Here he is. And I'm going to show how his art, he was, des- he was commissioned to design the tomb of Padre Pio. That's right. If you go to the tomb of Padre Pio, which I have, the whole thing is enshrined with Father Rupnik's creepy art. Check this out. Again, Father Rupnik does this weird art where he puts the eyeballs together. I think it's bad. I think there's something going on here. This is a a cultish, Freemasonic. Okay, do you remember this logo? Remember this logo? Here he is. There he is, pervy priest who wants to do Holy Trinity menage a trois with nuns. What a freak. Listen to this. A Jesuit priest who is reportedly close to Pope Francis has been accused of inviting two nuns to partake in a Holy Trinity three-way and is now facing allegations of sexual and spiritual abuse dating back decades. A former nun has claimed that Father Marco Ivan Rutnik used his psycho-spiritual control over her some three decades ago in order to make her watch pornographic films and have group sex sessions that he said would have religious significance. This is the weird, sicko, disgusting, nasty stuff that's going on in the Catholic Church. And guess what? It seems that you get rewarded for it. In 20, was it 2020? Hold up. Hold up. In 2020, let me get this right. One, yeah, in 2020... Pope Francis had Father Rupnik preach the Lenten meditation at the Vatican after he had already been excommunicated for doing nasty things with nuns. Explain that one to me. Can I get a Jesuit to accompany me on that journey of how a pervy priest showing pornographic films to nuns getting them into group sex sessions, telling them it's a religious experience, he gets to create the Year of Mercy logo? He gets to design the mosaics for the tomb of Padre Pio in San Giovanni Rotondo? Say what? Don't come around here calling people like me conspiracy theorists when this is going down. You don't believe me on Padre Pio and his tomb? Look, here is a video of the tomb of Padre Pio. I've been there, and when I was there, I was creeped out because every square inch of the place is covered with Father Rupnik art. I didn't even know who Father Rupnik was at the time. I just thought, this art is creepy, and I don't like it, and I don't think Padre Pio would like it. So here's the tomb of Padre Pio. All Father Rutnik art. Boom. Okay, pause. We are now in the chapel of the tomb of Padre Pio, the stigmatist. You can see the, the body of Padre Pio. You see it? It's just on your left off of center. That's the, bo- that's, the tomb of, that's the body of Padre Pio. 
what is all around him? Father Rupnik Creepo Sicko Art. You want to go venerate the tomb of Padre Pio, you're going to have to stare at miles of mosaics of pervert priest Father Rupnik. This is infiltration unto the hundredth degree. I'm going to keep running the film. Here we go. More creepy art. It's like a comic book. Look at, this is all at the tomb of Padre Pio. Miles of Father Rupnik art. This Father Rupnik was getting it on with nuns during the time period that this was created. More. This is at the. This is in the church of San Giovanni Rotundo. Yeah, so if you want to go pray at the tomb of Padre Pio, which I have, you're going to have to go stand in front of the Father Rupnik creepy art. Okay, so Padre Pio hired Father Rupnik to create this art. This is the year of mercy. And one of the features of Father Rupnik's art is he likes to put people's eyeballs together and make one eyeball into two. So in this image here, you can see Christ with someone who looks like a woman. Um, they're sharing an eyeball. What does this mean? Why is this pervert priest who had nuns watch pornography and have group sex se sessions? Here's the nun. She said, quote, Father Marco stated slowly and sweetly getting inside my psychological and spiritual world, exploding my uncertainties and fragility and using my relationship with God Pardon me. Let me turn that off. I'll repeat that. The nun said, Father Marco stated, started slowly and sweetly getting inside my psychological and spiritual world, exploiting my uncertainties and fragility and using my relationship with God to push me into sexual experiences with him, she told the Daily Mail. She said that during her time at the Slovenian convent between 1987 and 1994, Rupnik groomed her, had sex with her, and bullied her into staying silent about the abuse. This Father Rupnik right here. The former nun also claimed that Rupnik had asked her and another nun to have a threesome with him, saying they would replicate the three-way relationship between God the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is blasphemy and evil. That a priest, I mean, this isn't just a priest, like he's tempted and he wants to go have a, a sexual experience. He is perverting the mystery of the Trinity through pornography and, and having sex with nuns. Brides of Christ. This man doesn't believe in Jesus. This Jesuit. Rubnik abused as many as 20 women, the ex-nun claimed. She said her first complaint about his abuse was in 1994, but she was ignored by Rubnik's followers, both in Slovenia and in Rome. It's truly an abuse of conscience, the ex-nun said. The women who had accused Rupnik had, quote, seen their lives ruined by evil, suffered at the complicit silence. The Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith excommunicated Rupnik in May of 2020 and then lifted the excommunication also in May of 2020. The man was excommunicated for less than weeks. And like I said, in 2020, Father Rupnik was leading the Lenten meditation for the Pope at the Vatican in 2020. Let me give you a timeline real quick. 
All right, this nun says that these sexual, weird, satanic ritual abuse things were happening in the 1990s. But in 2015, Rupnik tried to absolve a woman that he had had relations with. Now, in canon law, if you, try, if you as a priest give absolution in a confession to someone that you've had illicit sex with, that's an automatic excommunication. Boom. So in 2015, while Rupnik was living in Rome, he absolved a woman. I don't know if it's one of the nuns or not. And that triggered an excommunication. That was, I believe, the first excommunication. Rupnik's got two of them. Oh, and by the way, right now, uh, Father Altman, he can't uh, do any sacraments right now. He's totally wrapped up, suspended. But Rupnik right now is a priest in good standing. How do you like that, Catholics? You guys got to understand, I don't, I'm not out here like I have a grudge against Pope Francis or I hate Pope Francis. I hate sin. I hate priests who are trying to use their spiritual power to to molest and abuse nuns and, and use the Trinity as, as, a, as a model for their perversion. If that doesn't make you angry, nothing will. The superior general of the Jesuits said that Rupnik was excommunicated in 2019. So it seems that we have multiple excommunications going on here. And, this, and I can't get the story straight. Was he, he, it seems he was automatically excommunicated in 2015. There's another situation in 2019. There's another situation in May 2020 with this guy. And yet he's always getting a free pass. In fact, he's getting hired to make logos for the Pope. So in May of, uh, sorry, in uh, Lent 2020, he preached the Lenten meditation for the Pope. He's received an honorary doctorate. He has released weekly videos on scripture. In October of 2022, so this is just a few months ago, the Congregation for the Doctrine of Faith decided that they would not pursue disciplinary charges against Rupnik over the so-called allegations because of the statute of limitations. Yeah, you heard me right. In October 2022, this priest who was showing pornographic films to nuns, persuading them to have relations with him, the Vatican just said, you know, we're not going to pursue this because the statute of limitations uh, have run out on this case. The Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, in December 2022, I talked about this in December. I'm circling back on it because, I mean, it's just gotten worse. It's so weird. December 2nd, 2022, the Jesuits released a statement saying that complaints, they were receiving complaints on Father Rubnik again in 2021. December 14th, 2022, the Superior General of the Jesuits, Father Sosa, confirmed that Rutnik had once been excommunicated, but that the penalty of excommunication had been remitted after Rutnik had repented of the sin, especially the sin of absolving an accomplice in a sexual crime. Also, the Jesuits said that Father Rupnik's ministry had been restricted since 2019, but that's not true because the man is giving a Lenten retreat for the Pope in 2020. You liars. You liars. You think we lay people are so dumb. You think we're dumb. This man's been excommunicated on and off. And you're saying, oh, well, we, uh, we restricted his uh, priesthood. Well, why is he still, why is he leading a Lenten retreat for the Pope the very next year? Don't, don't tell me he's restricted. He's restricted just like McCarrick was. Does this, does this, does this make you sick? Leave a comment.
I want to hear from you. Leave a comment. Let me know. Am I taking crazy pills here? Is it too much to expect that priests will not have relations with nuns, and if they do, they aren't invited to give uh, Lenten retreats for the Pope? And by the way, the giveaway is this guy is a creep. Look at this, this I situation. Let me I leave a comment right now. Is this art wholesome and is this art true? Jesus is joining his eyeball with another person's eyeball. Is this weird? A man who's, who's literally having three-way Holy Trinity weird things with nuns. He's creating this art and you want me to think that this art is legit? For reals? Uh, hell to the no. No. This is perversion. This is disgusting. I mean, I could just go in. You've, you've seen this art. This, this stuff was plastered all over your church during the year of mercy. I'm going to do a little, a little search here of Father, Father Rupnik art. And let's just look at it. I don't, I don't really want to, but you know what? We're here. Y'all are leaving comments. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Father Rupnik art. Let's see what, what comes up in this, in this world here. Okay, here we go. I know every single one of you have seen this kind of art. Here we go. So here's Father Rupnik right here. What a creep. Yeah, here's the, here's the thing right here with, with the eyes, the, the joined eyeball. I don't want that in my house. If anyone was thinking about getting me a Father Rupnik icon for Christmas, don't do it. I'll burn it. I don't want it. Get away from me. Here's another one with the eyeball together. Like, is this a Freemasonic, like, all-seeing eye situation going down? Oh, look. He got to do a whole church, and it looks horrible. Go away. Go away. Don't want this. Oh, look, another joined eyeball. Well, I guess that one's not totally joined. He's just loving it. I mean, it's, it's Novus Ordo art on steroids. I mean, when I went to Padre Pio's tomb, I just was creeped out. I was like, what is all of this? Oh, there's, here's, here's Francis and Rupnik. Looks like they just did a con celebration together right here. I mean, what is going on? I don't like this crucifix. I don't like that. Father Rupnik. He must have stayed up late that night before with that one. Not good. All right, y'all get the gist. This is the creepy art. This is the, imagine if you're a person who donated money uh, to to the Padre Pio Basilica, to the shrine. Imagine if you're that person, how mad you are right now. You know, remember this, this, I mean, <sighs> the big story is, I haven't even got to the big story. The big story is, is that the excommunication was allegedly overturned by Pope Francis himself personally. Pope Francis is running as far as he can right now from Father Rupnik, even though they're buddies, they're bros, they're Jesuits. He's literally the iconographer, logo maker for Francis. Pope Francis, did you reverse the excommunication of Father Rupnik? After he was molesting nuns and having Holy Trinity three ways, 
why did you have him preach the Lenten retreat in 2020? Why did he receive an honorary doctorate? Why are the good guys, the trads, people who just, large families, they just want to go to Latin Mass and be left alone, why you got to go after them? Why you got to go after Father Altman? Cardinal Pell? But Rupnik? Creepy, nun-chasing Rupnik? with the pornography collection that he has nuns watch, he gets a pass. He gets honored. Who knows how much money he got paid to make all this trash. I'm going to do some questions now, comments. I want to hear from you guys in the live. What do you guys think? Is this, is this all seeing eye weird? creepy and demonic and does it need to be ripped out of the churches hmm? Hmm? let me know saint michael the archangel probably not the real one but someone going by that name says you know i've seen this art before years ago and thought how odd how rather odd looking the eyes are so weird i agree i don't like it i don't like it get out of here The beard on the so-called Adam, which Jesus is carrying, according to the Vatican, is actually a heart shape. Well, let's see what we're talking about here. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Don't know what it means, though. This is so upsetting to faithful Catholics. Padre Pio, pray for our church, which is under assault. Imagine telling Padre Pio that your tomb is going to be decorated by a dude by a Jesuit priest who had orgies with nuns. Imagine telling that to, to Padre Pio. That's what happened. Preach it, Taylor. I'm not preaching. I'm just talking. Talking on a webcam. I'm just saying the things that we all feel out here in the pews. Thank you for showing us the wolves. These are the wolves. You know, people say, oh, Taylor, you know, you, why do you hate the Pope? I don't hate the Pope. I just don't want a church where, where nuns have, uh, they say, let's do the Holy Trinity three-way with nuns. I don't want that. I, I want those people gone. I don't want them around my kids. I don't want them around my wife. I don't want them around me. Well, yeah, well, Taylor, we should just like forgive everyone. I don't know. Okay, they can be forgiven by God. But I, I don't want them around my family and my church and my people. No. No more. Brood of vipers. Yes. Not only the eyes, but the whole package is very sensual. Yeah, it's, it's weird. What's going on here? Why is, I mean, why is everyone in his art like sharing an eyeball and literally like hugging each other, collapsing on each other? It's because he's a pervert priest. That's why. From the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And from the overflow of this pervy priest's heart, he made weird art. And Lee, can we get our money back? Heretics don't do refunds. Also, if you want to support the channel, Joey's reminding us, you can go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. I'll send you signed books. I'll send you a rosary. You want a rosary? I'll mail you a rosary. Go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. Also send you a book on how to pray the rosary for free. Check it out. Patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. Thank you, Joey. This art, Christina says, communicates bad theology. I agree. I agree. Same as Podesta. Yeah, I mean, all these creepy perverts are all into creepy perverted art. I don't have any creepy, perverted art. I mean, oh, why would you want that around you? Why do you want to look at that stuff? What did he do with the money? I thought the Je Jesuits took a vow of poverty. I don't know. I don't, got, I don't have their checking accounts. Mother Angelica often chastised the liberal church, rightfully. 
rightfully. Oh, why is it everywhere? It's everywhere because who has the keys right now? Grace flows downhill. You got bad popes, bad cardinals, bad bishops, bad priests, man. They're your last line of defense. And if they're opening the gate and letting the wolves in, uh, you, you, there's wolves everywhere. They're, they're literally painting the art in your churches. They're rewriting your liturgies. Francis yesterday, homosexuality is not a crime. Bishops should work to decriminalize sodomy. He says homosexuality is a sin, but it's not a crime. Well, let's get some language straight here, Francis. Every single person who struggles with same-sex attraction on planet Earth, if you ask them, they would say, well, the Pope says it's fine. Just go look at Slim Jim, James Martin, a Jesuit again. Go look at his Twitter page. Spend 10 minutes on that and, and tell me that this is not the promotion of sodomy. Prayers for a holy pope to get rid of these perverts. Amen and amen. In Texas, if you're a Baptist, you say amen, amen. But if you're a, if you're a Latin mass Catholic, you say amen, 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 amen. All desecrating our Lord need to be removed from the Catholic Church and the Vatican. That's right. I actually think, if I remember correctly, Father Rutnick has a studio near the Vatican. Anybody know that out there? Why has Father Rutnick got a, an art studio by the Vatican? You know, our, our Eastern brothers and sisters, our Eastern Catholics, they know. Icons are portals between heaven and earth. The image, the sacred art, participates in the reality in heaven. So when you kiss an icon of the Theotokos, the Virgin Mary, you're kissing the Virgin Mary. It passes on. That's why there's a theology of iconography. They actually fast while they paint, while they write the icons. They have the egg tempera and the paints and the brushes. All that stuff is blessed. It's a sacred thing. You're trying to tell me this guy right here was doing a sacred thing. H to the no, hard pass. Jesuitical nonsense. And why can, why can this guy spend all of his time as a Jesuit priest painting ugly pictures and Father Frank Pavone can't spend, what do you want, 50% of his priestly time to do pro-life work? That was not allowed by the bishop. By the way, I'm aware Father Frank Pavone has been accused of some things looking into it, not ignoring it. Let's give it some time and figure it out. That The art looks as though it's a depiction of the Antichrist. Maybe it is. Maybe so. It's creepy. And by the way, whenever they put up satanic images like they just did in New York City, those are portals. Images are portals. If they're erected to God, they're set up to be images and likenesses of Jesus Christ, Our Lady, the saints. They're portals of grace. Pornography, images of Baphomet, images of Satan. Those are set up to be geographic portals of evil. That's what we believe. Second Council of Nicaea in the 8th century defined this. Christina, this art has something to do with money laundering? I don't know. But why has it always got to be Jesuits? Why has it always got to be Jesuits? It's tacky. Pam says, we need Father Altman and the other good priests back. This priest and the rest of the corrupt Jesuit friends have got to go. 
Can't wait for Jesus to separate the wheat from the weeds. Amen and amen, Pam. Totally agree. Wicked, sinful. Well, I mean, what more can I say about this weirdness? I mean, what more can I say? I'll just say, Pope Francis, you better get this out of here. My, my perspective, ever since December 31st, I was hoping Francis would repent. He would look at the corpse, the body of Ben the 16th, and he'd make, that's one day going to be me. I'm going to be judged. I need to get ready. He's just, it seems to me he's just doubling down on, on the Rupniks and the sodomy and, you know, stuffing Benedict's body into a van, not even a hearse. It's not good. All right. Well, if you want to learn how all this started, check out my book, Infiltration. You can get the audible version. You can get the physical version. Go to Amazon or wherever books sold. If you want a signed copy, go to patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. The link is below in the show notes. I'll send you a signed copy. There's different tier levels there. I'll send you a rosary. I'll send you a signed copy of rosary in 50 pages. We got everybody praying the rosary. Pray the rosary every day. You're not on the team. I've also got a new book, Antichrist and Apocalypse. You can get a signed copy also at patreon.com forward slash DR Taylor Marshall. It's a best selling book. You need to know about this as well. And times from a Catholic point of view, not from the left behind Tim LaHaye stuff. The Church Fathers on the End Times. The Church Fathers on the, on the Antichrist. Check it out. Uh, if you want to move, and uh, go to a place that has a good traditional Latin mass and a good Catholic school, I recommend you contact and reach out to realestateforlife.org, realestateforlife.org, not .com, dot, .org. They'll get you a real estate agent to help you sell your house where you are, to find a house where you want to go. Many people have used this to relocate, and I've received thank you notes for it. So check them out, realestateforlife.org, and tell them you heard it on the Dr. Taylor Marshall Show. All right, I got to bounce out. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ says you're the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. Like the video, share the video on Facebook. Subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Kick out the degenerates. Kick out the filth. Your children and your grandchildren deserve it. <laughs>